Hey fellow agents, what's up? It's Robbie with Oakworld Games and we've got an EGX 2014 presentation of Tom Clancy's The Division. So they're going to go over a lot of the details you may not know about The Division. I'm going to include some new gameplay as well. Also, there's a gameplay trailer with brand new snippets of gameplay I'm going to include in the description below so you can follow the link and find that as well. But guys, here we go. The brand new presentation. Enjoy. So what is The Division? The Division is a new entry to the Tom Clancy franchise where you play a, uh, one of a group of agents that is uh, specifically trained for a pandemic and uh, they're based on civilians uh, like you and me uh, but they, they get this special training uh, uh, and technology so that they can cope with this situation. Uh, in, the, in the case of, uh, of The Division it's also based on New York uh, and the, the events that happen around New York. It's developed by, uh, by Massive, uh, a studio that is uh, a part of Ubisoft, and with the help of uh, Reflections and uh, Red Storm uh, Entertainment, uh, the original uh, creators by, of uh, Tom Clancy Games. Uh, we also use the Snowdrop engine uh, that is uh, developed for this game and for new generation of, uh, of games um, that is uh, coming also for Xbox One, PS4 and PC. So what, what do we want to achieve? We want to immerse the player at all times and it's about doing complete immersion. And like I said before, you need to have different disciplines and a very strong passion for this and very, you, you really want to, to do something that I don't think has been done before, especially for being an, an RPG game. And how do we do it? So we have a, a little agenda here of the different parts I'm going to talk about. First, uh, that we have a, a, a dynamic world. The world is not static. It's, uh, it's always changing and moving. Uh, and we, we care about the little things as much as the big things. Uh, and then at the end, it's going to be about how, we, how you read the, this world and how you interact with this world. And everything I'm going to talk about is to achieve complete immersion. So first of all, a, a dynamic world. Uh, what, what do we mean with that? It's a world that is not static and it's, it's almost a world where you, could, uh, you, you actually don't have to even interact in the world and there's still things going on. That's the feeling we want. We want to immerse you completely. So we have some examples. Uh, first, uh, a living world. Uh, there is so many details going on uh, to create a living world and in, in this case for example and I think nobody actually even noticed this is that you get snow on the shoulders of the agent when you're outside and it's snowing and when you enter inside it melts and it's been in uh, both our demos and I don't think anybody even picked it up and that's the kind of detail we're, we're aiming for and this goes for everything for animation for physics for uh, effects uh, always going, going for the the, the things that, that make up the, the, the whole image without actually thinking about it. Uh, contrasting this, we have a huge open world. It's uh, at least the biggest game we have created, and it's uh, incredibly big and detailed. Uh, and that's a challenge in itself. But at the same time, being in this world and uh, don't have loading times, don't have waiting for maps, don't have to do, it's also a part of the immersion that you're, you're being in this world and you're uh, living through the crisis and uh, nothing to stop you from exploring it. At the same time, we also have uh, a lot of dynamic things going on here. We have a live uh, or a day-night cycle going on at all times. We have uh, weather systems that change uh, all the time, uh, and so on. At the same time, this, uh, this whole world needs to feel alive. It's almost like it's breathing. 
uh, the weather affects everything, we have the shaders, we have the, um, the textures, everything is, uh, uh, is made in a way that it feels that it's actually there and it is alive. And then we have this thing, <laughs> the corridor uh, that I got from the internets today. Uh, and this is just um, an example of how the world reacts to you. Uh, it was picked up by people, but this is just one of many things that we do where the, the actions of the player is aff affecting the world. And, uh, and what you do is, uh, you, you, don't, you don't feel like you're this uh, vessel in a world, you actually feel that you are part of it. And that's, this is just one example. So let's start with the, the major things. We have this uh, amazing city, uh, which is New York. And uh, when we made the decision in the beginning, we thought, hey, yeah, it's, it's a perfect city to, to showcase a, a pandemic. And then we actually started looking at it, and we said, <laughs> it's incredibly big. Uh, so we needed to build um, a system to be able to cope with this. So building an icon, because this city is just not uh, a collection of buildings, and uh, it actually has a soul, and we needed to replicate that. So everything from the mood, the atmosphere, the, the ar architecture, the people, everything. Uh, we needed to think of a, a way of how can we, how can we build the, uh, and, and make it uh, justice, the amount of detail and the amount of variety that we have in a city like uh, New York. Um, we, we create a, a building system. Uh, so in, in a movie that I'm gonna show you soon, in the beginning you're gonna see how this building system works and how, we, how easy it is to, to do different types of um, architecture, sizes, and uh, variety. Uh, and, then, and the last part of the movie is going to be on the variety we can actually achieve. So it's going to be in um, uh, different environments and different uh, looks on, on the game. So if we roll that video. Cool, right? <laughs> uh, now we have this, uh, we're able to build this world, we're able to populate it with the data we want. Uh, another part that is as important is the light. How, how does light affect this world? The, the, to be able to sell a, a believable scene and uh, make something that feels re realistic, uh, we, we took a long time to, to look at how lighting works. Uh, and not only lighting that is static, which is like what you could see like the best lighting that you could see in the last generation was static. The, now this generation, when we, we have more power, we can do more things. And one of the things we're doing is dynamic lighting. Uh, so to be able to feel uh, completely immersed in this and uh, to have a, a different experience for each time you play. Shots uh, and showing the volumetric light and so on uh, for this. So if we roll the video.
also pretty cool. <laughs> uh, so we have the lighting now. It's, it's a, a lighting and atmosphere in the world. Then we need to fill it with all the other the details. Um, and, and another thing that is as important as lighting is surfaces and material and how, how you interact with them, how you feel that this is actually a real place that you're playing in. Uh, so we worked a lot on, on getting all these details. Um, we did a very extensive work on, uh, on shaders, so they, they work and reflect and uh, uh, act as real materials, uh, so they're physically based. And um, I could go on on more technical thing, but actually for me as an art director, that the, the important thing is that we're uh, portraying a realistic scene, and you're able to experience this world in a way that I don't think you, you can do normally. And, and on top of this, the lighting affecting the, the materials uh, in real time. So I'm going to show you another video. And the first part is going to be on, on the material. So you can take a look at, for example, the metals of the car and how it reflects uh, their environment. And then compared to, for example, the bricks or the plastic bags uh, and, the, and the reflections of the snow. On top of this, we need, to, we need this world to be dynamic. So we have uh, weather systems that uh, interact with this the shader system. And uh, you can get, uh, for example, snow coverage in the cars and in, this, in the roads. Uh, to fill this uh, world with even more detail, we worked a lot with, uh, for example, uh, smoke effects, uh, volumetric lighting, and so on. So it feels like there is an actual atmosphere to the scene. And then to the last part is that we did a lot of work on, uh, on fires, for example. Uh, that's a very good example because it's a mix of lighting and effect at the same time. And uh, I think we achieved a very good look. So if we roll the movie. So now that we have a world that feels realistic and is uh, alive and gives you all the immersion that you need, it's about, the next step is about the reading this world. How do you interact with the world? How do you get the information that you need for gameplay and for navigation and so on? Uh, so normally when you work on, for example, UI and uh, uh, mission markers and uh, information to the player, you, you, try, you, you do things that are actually not part of the world and you, you're breaking immersion. In our case, when we developed, for example, the UA system, is that we, we thought of uh, ways of not breaking immersion, still keeping the player that he feels it is part of the world, and uh, surrounds him with the, the necessary information and still feel that is uh, uh, accessing information that is important to him at the same time that is part of the world. So in the movie that we're going to show you, is the, the first one is uh, the map, the mega map that we developed. And it was uh, very important for us not to do the typical 2D filter that you normally see that stops you from uh, being immersed in the world. So we put it inside of the world and surrounding the player. At the same time, it needed not only to look cool, it needed to actually be very functional. And it actually looks very cool, and it's very functional. <laughs> um, the second part is about giving information to the player, uh, again, without breaking immersion. So we have a, a contextual system where it, it gives you, for example, in, in this case, a contamination area. 
you will see that uh, it, it shows th that area in world and exactly where that happens uh, without actually coming something in between you and, and the experience. Uh, the third part is going to be on uh, gameplay systems and gameplay information. Uh, in this case it's uh, a grenade and or the blast radius of a grenade is going to be showcased in the world and in, in the area that's going to happen. Uh, but you can also see you can do pulses, uh, you can see people behind covers uh, and also get information of, uh, for example, if you're, if you're getting a, a healing or something like that. Uh, and the last part is going to be about the echo system that we use for telling stories. It's a narrative tool for us to explain uh, a moment frozen in time and using a point cloud system, uh, you, can, uh, you can achieve a lot of story and immersion without breaking the uh, the gameplay, like for example many games that do cutscenes, is that you're, you're breaking the immersion of the game, you're going into something else and then you're going back to the world. And it works very well for a multiplayer game, since our game is uh, online only, uh, and you're going to play with friends. If somebody's uh, experiencing a cinematic moment, do you want to get taken away from your experience and see that cinematic moment? Or are you going to wait for that person to to get all the <laughs> experience of, of that cinematic moment. And in this way, we, we can achieve something that is uh, based on the technology that we have uh, for the agents, and at the same time, giving immersion and, uh, and delivering the story. So if we roll the movie. So that's one of the things I'm most proud about the UI that we were able to achieve. Uh, but actually, ev everything we work on from the very beginning when we started is that is this very concept of uh, immersion. And we have, uh, uh, for example, so many other things that that are uh, that is part of it. Like for example, I think we have the most advanced uh, destruction system in any game right now. We have uh, one of the most amazing lighting, and also works in real time. We have. Uh, Actually, every, every part of the game is uh, incredible. And we did all of this uh, not because we wanted to do any specific part amazing. All of this is going to, to the, the concept of immersion, that we want to, to deliver a, a, a story and, a, and an experience to the gamer. Uh, so, especially for being an RPG game, where it's a lot of information, there's a lot of tactics, there's a lot of um, things that can very easily get cluttered we wanted to give a new way of, uh, of uh, delivering this. And it can only be achieved with the help with, uh, of the whole team and all the disciplines. Everything from sound designers to artists to uh, programmers. Uh, and all working together uh, and on all the different systems, we can achieve this. So I'm, I'm actually very, very happy that we, we were able to do this. And I uh, really hope you can soon enjoy the game, uh, as we do every week. <laughs> Uh, and it's uh, yeah, it's gonna be amazing. So thank you very much for coming and seeing this uh, presentation on immersion. Thank you.